Hello again and welcome to the uh, first build update of this uh, lovely Tamiya kit, the uh, Panzerkampfwagen 4 of H. Um, like I said in the unboxings, if you are watching it, I did the uh, Academy version of this and uh, they're very very similar, they're practically the same really to be honest with you. It wouldn't surprise me if they shared the moulds. Hmm. But anyway, I digress. Um, we're going to get started on it and anybody that knows the way I do the build updates I get the instructions um, I do the first maybe three or four steps we come back we have a look at those made up discuss how it went any problems with it how easy it was or how hard it was um, just basically kind of uh, have a look at what we've done then we go on, we do another couple of steps, same again, keep going back, um, seeing how it went, and how everything uh, fits together, be it good or bad. So, without further ado, let's get down to the bench and let's get started. Okay, so here we are, here's the instructions, the very start. Step one. Step one has us making up the, uh, the rear panel. Okay, we've got the muffler, the generator, the rear panel itself, and we're adding all those little bits and pieces to it. Okay, then we go on to step two. And in step two, we're fitting the uh, return rotors along the top. We're fitting um, these pieces here, A14, which are the bogies. We call them bogies. They're probably not bogies, but I call them bogies anyway. We're also fitting the... Um, this piece here at the front which will attach the uh, spare tracks onto it and the mountings at either side for the uh, drive sprocket and we're fitting our rear panel on right and in step three we are fitting the rear mud guards and this little uh, little section there okay and then we're attaching the upper hull to the lower okay let me show the sort of the, the basic box made okay so I'll go ahead I get those three steps done we'll come back then and we'll have a look at the made up box and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll discuss any problems how easy it went how hard it went hopefully it will go quite easy I'm expecting it to go quite easy because basically being a Tamiya kit they are usually quite easy to do so, we'll get them done, we'll come back and we'll have a look. Okay, here we go, back down to the instructions. So I'm after getting the first three steps done. Here I am with my, my trusty green highlighter. I use the highlighter for marking off pieces that I have done. Um, if there's a piece that doesn't require fitting immediately and I'll be fitting it later on, I mark it with uh, an orange highlighter so when I go back through the instructions and the whole thing is done I can see ah oh, I forgot to put on this that or the other and you can see from a glance that you've everything put on as well so it's quite handy to you know just to take them off handy little tip I use it the whole time and I've probably said it every time I've shown but anyway um you have to get them the exhaust done the generator and the back plate uh, that went together very very easy no problems with that whatsoever uh, then I fitted the back plate to the uh, to the tub. Now I think I'd, I'd say what happened was a bit of warping, a slight bit of warpage uh, over time on the tub that I had, and um, it didn't quite fit perfectly. I had to do a little bit of uh, manipulation, shall we say, and a bit of filling. But I got it done anyway, and I got it in. Okay, there it is in there. No problems with it really after that, but just to, sorry, should have said there we go. It did need, like I said, it did need a little bit of filling. Right, I don't know if we can get in to see the where it's filled. There you can see there down at the bottoms. Okay, did need a little bit of filling. Also, where it needed a bit of filling was across here, which is when I put on the top section here. Um, there was a, a gap. Right there. Less than a millimetre, but there was a uh, there was a gap there, so 
that gap is now filled. I use a bit of um, sprue goo. Sprue goo basically is melted sprue, which is uh, sprue mixed with um, to me extra thin. I've done a video on that. Okay, so there's that little uh, that little joint there, all nicely fixed up. <coughs> That's the video. Um, I fitted the uh, this rail here along the front, which holds the spare track. There she is there. Quite an easy piece to do, actually. No problems with that. Everything went again quite smoothly. Uh, yeah, the return rollers and the uh, the bogies, and also the uh, the, the drive train there. Uh, for the the drive sprockets. Oh, again, there we go. Oops, they all went together quite nicely. Both sides. There we go. Again, no problems with them whatsoever. So we got this far. The only problems, like I said, was just a little bit of filling along this line. And if I remember back to the uh, academy one, I had the same line to fill. Um, so we filled that um, and a bit of filling here on the back plate but there was definitely down to a bit of warpage in the in the plastic it wasn't really a fault of the kit itself I think it was the uh, I think it was warpage I'm putting it down to warpage anyway because um, it was slightly askew um, askew basically means you know one bit is sort of slightly more forward than the other um, once I put in the back plate then it wouldn't fit properly so I had to kind of use a bit of pressure to kind of level everything up okay you know and hold it in place so I just literally held it in place like that while I watched a bit of television <laughs> simple as that and uh, while the glue was setting use the extra thin glue got it to sort of hold in place another little bit of, of um, to me extra thin a bit of the filler Held it again for another little while, and it, it worked. It, it kind of it, it slipped in nicely in there. No, I have to little pieces after dropping off there. I haven't a clue what it is. Oh, it's only a bit of a bit of a bit of sprue. <laughs> right. So we move on anyway. We move on now. We've got step four. We have step four. Right. Step four. We make wheels right we've got um, four different types there we've got our drive sprocket the rear wheel right they're calling it the rear wheel there it's the uh, the idler wheel we've also got our road wheels which are here and spare wheels we've got to make two spare wheels we have to make 16 of these ones with the poly caps we have to make two uh, return rollers or not return rollers, idler wheels. Why should I give return rollers? Two idler wheels and also two drive sprockets. So we're going to make up the wheels. Then we are on to here um, fixing of wheels and rear parts. Okay. Now I'll be putting the wheels on, but I'll just be using a little bit of white glue, just for starters. Um, because I want to get in there for painting, I want to get the wheels off for painting just to get the uh, the tires done properly. Um, it's much easier to do it when they're separate pieces than trying to you know trying to get around them in there. You know, um, I found it's much easier to do the wheels actually off the tank. So I use a little bit of a um, little bit of PVA glue just to hold the wheels on while I'm getting everything made and just for shits and giggles, as people might often say. Okay. So we're fitting some um, these little towing hook thingy me jiggies, right? Two of them have to be fitted on. Uh, two brace pieces. They also get fitted in to place. You can see them the whole lot done there, right? So it's these two and fitting of the wheels. And then we're on down to step six, which I'm going to leave for the moment. So we'll do step four and step five. So we should have the wheels on. The next time you see it now, we'll have the uh, the wheels are, will be on and the extra little bits there at the back. Okay. So we'll get them done. 
I've come back we'll discuss how all that went and uh, we'll move on then from there okay so I'll open my kit and work away and I'll see you in a few minutes no, just something else I, I kind of want to show that you just handy little tips um, most people will already know this but you know like I said this this is a channel for uh, hobby modelers and for people kind of just starting um, you know and these are brilliant starter kits the uh, the old Tamiya kits they're absolutely thick and fabulous um, as a starter kit but um, when you're cutting the pieces off you just have one of these little yokes here or any kind of tub Okay, I find these brilliant because um, they're handy for storage and things like that. And then when you're going, put you know, building and you're putting your parts in, they're dead handy to uh, to use for keeping them in. Also, when you're cutting pieces off the sprue, if you put your sprue over uh, over the thing like that, you can just snip away over the thing. It just makes them easier to pop into okay another little tip as well when it comes now to uh, to building to building these okay now as you saw we cut off off the sprue so you're going to have a little tiny sprue gate mark thing there where it's, where it's joined to the sprue basically now you give it a rub of a, a bit of a uh, sander, okay. Now if you do it now, there is a chance you end up with a little thing, little flat spots, flat spots. That's what they're kind of really known as. Um, now, a way to avoid flat spots is, believe it or not, is to make them up, make up your wheels while they are before you actually clean them off. Now normally you clean a part off before you go assembling makes sense but when it comes to wheels it just makes a lot more sense to build your wheels first All right. get your two pieces together you have a much wider wheel to work with okay because it's all done all nicely together and then when you go cleaning them off and giving them a bit of a rub down it's always good to kind of give them the, the whole wheel a rub rather than just say where they, where they, they join the, the sprue give the whole wheel a rub makes it look realistic as well the fact that you know that, that they wouldn't be they wouldn't be kind of rounded they'd be quite flat and they'll be slightly roughed up as well. Just it takes the paint that little bit easier as well. Okay. Give it a bit of a rub down. And there you go, there's one of your wheels already made. And the fact that you've done the two of them together, you're not going to have one flat bit in one wheel and a round bit in the other. Just keeps them nice and even. Now it's not me really not that noticeable on say the Panzer trees and fours, but when you go up into the likes of uh, tiger tanks and uh, panthers and things like that, where your wheels are much bigger, that's where it really that's where it really tells, you know. So like I said, a bit of white glue now we'll be popping them all into place. We might even need a bit of white glue because they kind of stick on quite uh, okay because of the um, poly caps forgot about the poly cap so we don't need the white glue okay so there's one wheel done I'll carry on and get the rest of them done all right just wanted to show you that uh, just handy little tips um, I picked it up off somebody else and uh, just pass it on you know that's what it's all about okay then so now we've got the, uh, the wheels all made and the other little support brackets there and things that go onto the rear mud guards or flaps or whatever they're freaking called I have the faintest idea and with wheels fitted as well okay now they can all be taken off for the painting process later on but they're fitted anyway uh, 
great. Those poly caps are absolutely a fabulous idea because everything, you know, everything spins, all the wheels spin and all that. Okay, so we'll have a look at that. All right, there's the wheels on both sides. No problems with the wheels as we saw there when I was making them. They're, 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 they're lovely, they really are. Everything fits in nicely. Um, you know, so it works basically. The wheels go round and round like the wheels on the bus. And also, what we do? Oh, yes, we did these uh, support parts here and here. Okay. And also these two little. Um, boom, boom. We got to zoom in on that now. When it sort of zooms up, it fixes itself. There's also these two little bars here. There's one there, and there's one there. Okay. Come on. There we go. We can see those, right? So that's all done, right? We are out of focus, in focus. So. There we go, we're down now as far as step number six. In step number six, right, we're fitting on the uh, front laces plate there, onto the front, the driver's um, vision block, the hull machine gun, handle of some kind by the looks of it. Um, also, we have the uh, this thing here looks like a starting handle. Could be a starting handle. I don't know. We've got the uh, air vents there because that's into the, uh, the transmission hatch. So I presume that's sort of to that air circulating around there. Um, we've got the, uh, the light that's got to go on. Fire extinguisher. A um, couple of other bits and pieces go on the side there including a sort of um, side hatch vision block type port thingy me jiggy um, we've got the wire cutters and a large spatter another large spatter we've got uh, a little support block that goes in there and this piece here which is the uh, I think it's the locking mechanism for the, um, the rear mudguard because the rear mudguards are movable, they can be lifted up and put down you know, when you're changing wheels and when you're track adjusting and all that kind of thing these would be able to be lifted up and flopped back down again and also the, uh, the license plate so we get them done anyway okay just loads of little bits and pieces that we put on um, and then we're few more bits and pieces. We've got these uh, uh, these hooks, these, these, these little jobbies here. They're, they're towing clip type thingies for hooking onto the tow ropes. There probably is a name for them. And again, I don't know what it is. Okay, we have the, uh, the aerial box Okay, box for the antenna or the aerial. Some people call it an aerial, some people call it an antenna. Um, but we're also fitting an antenna here at the back, so why would we have the uh, the antenna slide there? Do not know. Do not know. But we have an antenna here in the back. Um, we've got the cleaning rods, we have our spare wheels. Okay, uh, we've got these little. Uh, holding pieces here they're for the uh, I think they're for the I'd say they're for the um, for the Scherzens maybe I don't know we get an extra little clip for them um, and also two handles right we got them and then we're over to the other side we've got uh, air cleaner that's what they call it we got the shovel, the other one of these little uh, springy hooks things for the, uh, the, the mud guards at the back. We've got more of these uh, clips there for the Scherzen plates. Another little vision uh, opening slot thingamajiggy. 
we got the jack, uh, a couple more tools, and of course the two hatches, the drivers and the uh, whole machine gunners hatches. Right? Uh, there's the makeup there, the air cleaner, and the makeup of the jack. And we'll stop at that thing. They were into the gun barrel and we're in, into the turret section. So we should have the uh, main body of the tank basically boxed off by the time we get to there. Okay, so I carry on with the construction of those things. I guess as far as step eight. Right, so we've got step seven, we've got step six. Step seven and step eight to get done. No, funny thing is, if they were dragon instructions, all those things would all be on the one small little picture, and it would drive us up the friggin' wall. Okay, but to me, uh, into three sections. Oops, so we'll get them done. Come back, we'll have a look at them. Usual discussion. I can't see much problems with any of them. Really, it's just putting pre molded pieces onto it there should be no problems there you know the only thing we really have to make up is we got to make up the box there for the um, the spare wheels what I'll be doing is I'll be putting the box together I won't be putting in this pole here we'll be adding that pole later on because I want to get the uh, the wheels painted up as separate items I'll be painting them when I'm painting the wheels of the tank itself um, we'll be putting on the air cleaner and we'll be putting on all the tools. I personally, I, I, I put on the tools and I paint them afterwards when they're actually in situ. Some people like to paint them separately. I'm, 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 I'm of the case where I can paint them on if I don't mind. So, we get this far as step 8 and we come back and we'll have a look at all of that. Okay. Okay then, I'm after getting step six, uh, seven, and eight all completed. Uh, now the more I get into this kit, the more I'm kind of uh, realizing why this kit is no longer available. Um, they've basically retooled the whole kit. Um, I didn't know that at the time of the unboxing, but I found out since. Uh, basically, somebody said it in the comments on the unboxing, and I went and I checked it all out. And yep, this kit is no longer available, and uh, it is a whole re new tool. Okay, and I wouldn't blame them. Um, yeah, there's no problems with the fit, but it's just lots of little things shall we say okay um, no I don't know whether it's a problem with just this kit or not as I said at the start uh, there's a slight warp in it um, no because all these bogies there is only one way they can, sorry, because all these bogies here right there's four on either side there's only one way they can go in and they kind of fit into a thing it's not a case of uh, you've got to hold them in place and make sure everything is all nice and level because if you look at that that's they are all level, okay. There is a level line. I've checked it with a ruler. I put a ruler down underneath it, and everything is level. Be very careful here, though, because something else that I want to show you. And it is the exact same at this side, right? But yet, when it's put down on a flat surface, okay. As you can see there, it's got a slight warp in it, okay. Also, um, these little pieces here, okay, they're the holders for the shirts and plates. Uh, I mean, the shirts and plates will come out and there's a little, there'll be a little kind of, um, you know, like you, you hold on the inside of a shield, a little handle, and they sort of slip on over these. They're freaking as fragile as hell. There should be a much better way of putting them on. Um, now, if anybody any of you out there does have this kit in your stash and you do intend to make or anybody th um, has the opportunity to get their hands on this kit now it's not a very bad kit it's, it's not it's not um, it's not a, a totally horrible kit right but um, it's not a great one either 
um, like I said we had this big long gap here okay that you see filled these pieces here are so flimsy and in the instructions it has you fitting them as part of the uh, uh, of this I think personally that if anybody does have this kit that they do all those accessories that have to go on okay in uh, sticks six seven and eight and then put them on so then you're putting it aside letting them sit up or set up should I say while you go on then to the, cons the construction of the, uh, the barrel and the turret and all that so you're not you're not touching it every now and then because um, it has you doing one side and then you move around to the other and the amount of times that I've ended up tweaking these uh, this one has actually popped off completely at one stage when I was doing it I'm, I'm literally now in the last 10 minutes after uh, finishing this side and once they're fitted you've got to kind of keep keep double checking and triple checking on them because they don't actually slot into a thing you know if there was a kind of a groove you know a horseshoe shaped groove that they could kind of slot onto so they won't be um, sliding up or down even as light as they are gravity is still going to take effect and they're slowly being kind of uh, pulled out of uh, alignment until the glue totally sets up uh, so just be just be careful with them just be careful with them I would suggest like I said putting them on a little bit later um, plenty of uh, seam lines to be cleaned off the fit for this air cleaner left a gap very very slight gap but not you know it's still quite visible um, I have a sort of a uh, bit of extra glue and things in there now and I'm gonna wait basically it sets in place and then I'm going to clean it off a bit probably should have cleaned it off before I fitted it but uh, I wanted to get it fitted anyway I was kind of getting a bit frustrated with these little feckin shirts and holders um, but just needs to be cleaned off not really worried too much about that that's just sort of standard modeling but a couple of little bits and pieces like I said could be a lot better okay and they probably are a lot better now in the, uh, the retooled um, kit of this right so now I can put that aside um, I've got all those little pieces put on um, I didn't like I said here putting the, uh, the spare wheels in there because I want to paint them separately so that they'll look right rather than trying to paint something that's in a box you know which is practically impossible to do it's very hard to paint something that's already in a box so I left the top bar off um, if the wheels out I have the box fitted just quick show you that now okay have the box all fitted there um, even that could be could could be a little bit better um, you know yourself <laughs> I won't say anymore just little tiny little things uh, yeah you could say it's a, well, that's all part of modeling and it is it is but I'm just pointing these out for the uh, I mean they're not really bothering me too much but for somebody that's getting into, into the hobby I could see them sort of getting so frustrated with little things like that and ended up dumping the whole feckin thing but uh, with these uh, little hooks just add them on at the very end just before you put it away and move on to the, uh, onto the turret okay so I can put that aside now and let that set up you know, the longer it sets the glue as you know yourself it sets up and it goes pretty rock solid um, unless barring in sort of a, a drastic thing where they'll get damaged but anyway right now gun uh, step nine here right has us constructing the barrel right and the uh, mantlet right a couple of parts to it um, we get the barrel it's a two piece we've got a sleeve here we've got the holder and the mantlet and the uh, Sort of the machine gun in there. Now, whether it's a ranging gun or just an ordinary coaxial, I do not know and I do not care. But basically, uh, it's got to be done. Okay. So that's step nine. We'll have a look now what's on step ten. Uh, step ten has us making up the, uh, the breech section. Okay. 
okay. Now we've put them parts together there. We've got the uh, the basket. Um, to be quite honest with you now, I'm going to actually build it, right? But if you were going to have the, um, the turret closed, or you're going to have the figure in the turret where you can't sort of see down into the turret and you're going to have the side doors closed, you don't have to kind of construct the whole lot, to be quite honest with you. Now, I am going to do it, right? I do it because you know, it's there and it's a bit of modelling, so why not get it done? Okay. Um, and also then we've got fitting the... Uh, that to this piece here, which basically is the, the you know the whole front of it. Now, be very very careful with these two pieces here. The slightest bits of glue, I'd suggest myself is just popping them in and putting a touch of glue to the sides, and if the capillary action of the glue get around it, rather than you know, putting glue into the holes and popping them on. Because uh, I did have that problem with the um, with the academy one. I remember it was the same fit, and I, I kind of glued them in, glued them in a little bit too much, and it made this piece here uh, practically impossible to uh, elevate and uh, go up and downy, shall we say? So I'll do step nine and step ten. We'll come back. We'll have a look at that. Okay, the gun in its entirety, and uh, we'll see how it all went together. Okay. Okay, and here we are back down with the instructions again, right? Be here, we won't worry about that. Anyway, this was the construction of the gun barrel. Uh, it's a two-piece two barrel with the, uh, the top of the muzzle brake there. Uh, the um, tubey thing, as I called it, and the rest of the uh, muzzle um, holding piece. I like how technical my terms are. I love it. Anyway, uh, no problems with that whatsoever. That gun went together quite nicely. Um, no fit issues with that. It uh, was quite together quite nicely. Okay. Um, and quick bit of sanding that got rid of the seam, which goes to show that it was a uh, perfect mould and. Uh, it just fitted together lovely, it really did. No problems with that whatsoever. Okay. Thing. Now we're down to step, step 10. Forgot to mark off the 10. Isn't that not? Right on here. Anyway, um, step 10 we were making the, uh, the, the, the breech part there and the, uh, the, the shell basket. Okay. That mechanism there, a little bit fiddly, uh, but it, but really, I, I didn't have any problems with it. Just a little bit fiddly, kind of awkward, small parts, my eyes, all that kind of thing. Um, there was no problems with the kit, shall we say? It was all sort of my my uh, my dexterity, my chunky fingers, and my bad eyesight. Uh, then we were fitting that section there onto this plate here uh, again no problems everything went smooth as hell and then finally I just did this little bit here uh, very very fiddly very very fiddly indeed but um, it does fit in nicely it really does a uh, little bit of glue that to me extra thin is absolutely ideal for this it really really is I just put a tiny bit down get it to hold in place put the three pieces together and then another little bit of uh, to me extra thing then to seal it all in. We'll have a look at that now, okay? I start off with that awkward back bit like I said. Um, just a little bit fiddly uh, but everything went together. No problem whatsoever and it does go up and down, okay? So no problems with that. Um, all the ejector pin marks are on the inside. Okay, we've got a couple of raised ones there, which I, how I hadn't noticed them earlier. I do not know. Okay, removed as easy as that. Okay, a little bit of a scraping now. 
and they're not going to be seen. The reason I removed them is just in case they get in the way with the fitting of it. But uh, no problems, none whatsoever, really. Uh, just as I said again, it was it, it was uh, it was just my dexterity rather than the actual kit itself. So we've got the barrel and the breech and the basket all done. Okay, now we're on to the turret itself. Okay, so you've got the turret top plate as they call it. So we'll call it that as well. Okay, which is this piece here. We're fitting the uh, cupola rings then, and there's uh, let see one, two, three, four, and the big ring there. It's five parts into that. Two handles and the vent. Okay, and it shows us here the fitting of those for the cupola. Then we've got our cupola made. And then we're fitting the uh, the two sides, the hinges for the uh, escape hatches or doors, whatever you want to call them. Okay, and two this one to go on the other side as well. It'll probably tell us later on down the line. We'll only fit this one. We we'll do it as we as they said, tell us right. Um, and this little piece here, whatever that is, I do not know as well. All right, so we got to fit those into the. Um, hinges to fit the hinges on the inside before we lock all that down um, then it's just a case of putting all the parts together putting a gun barrel into the breech and uh, gluing everything up okay so we do that I think I don't think I, I think I, the instructions are a bit too far forward I do apologize again there's the plate right there's our cupola parts and there we have it, there's the fitting of that. Right? And dink, and it has us there making the figure as well. Okay, the reason they have us making the figure at this stage is because, in, as opposed to earlier, is we can get his hands onto it. Okay. <coughs> no, excuse me. I will be doing the figure. So, we will be fitting all that. And I'll even make the figure as well. Why not? We'll do it all part of that. So I'll get step 11 and step 12 done, and then I'll get the figure made, and we'll come back. We'll have a look at them. Okay. So step 11, step 12, and the figure. Okay. We'll get that done. We'll come back and we'll have a look at them. Okay, uh, before I kind of start here, anybody that knows me know that uh, I, I I generally love the older kits. Um, I like that they're, you know, they're a good fit and they're all quite basic. Um, you don't have tons of little fiddly parts, all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, and I especially, you know, have, have a great sort of uh, soft spot for Tamiya kits. I will tell you straight, this has to be the worst to me a kit that I've ever done. Really, really has to. Um, horrible fit problems. Uh, and, you know, I was having a couple of them here, you know, lots of little fiddly things. I give it the benefit of the doubt on a few occasions, saying that you know, it's probably the warping of the kit, because there is a bit of a warpage in it. Um, you can even see it now uh, from the sprues. If you look at the sprue here, you can see the warping in that, okay, over time and things like that, it kind of warped a bit. It is an old kit. Um, so I was putting a lot of, you know, parts slightly out of kink and things like that. But, you know, freaking hell, this is pretty old horrible. Right, um, I did section 12, right, fitted everything in. Horrible fit here trying to fit this onto the gun onto the, onto the gun mantlet. Um, fitting that together, no real problems. I must say, actually, that that the rest of it went okay. Went down here anyway, and I said, I, I, I you know, I'd carry on. I know um, the last time I said I'd stop at twelve and we'd move on, but uh, it was kind of late at night, and I didn't want to go kind of um, recording because sounds like I'm talking to myself in the middle of the night uh, so I kind of carried on and I did step 13 okay I fitted the doors a few other bits and pieces and things like that okay 
fit in this box here at the back. Now I remember when I did the, uh, the Academy version of this, this, this kit and how nice that that box just, you know, put on the pieces and it just fitted in nicely, it really, really did. It just kind of went in grand. Okay, like I, again, like I said, it was quite a basic kit. Um, very, very similar to this one in how the parts are molded and all that, right? But the box in this one is freaking horrible. It really, really is. Um, it didn't want to fit straight. I ended up freaking, I, I got annoyed when I ended up just sticking this thing on here. I didn't really, as you can see, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. For a finish, uh, I'm just getting totally annoyed with it by that stage. Uh, the box just wouldn't fit in properly, and as you can see here, I'm after having to use filler, right? After having to use filler in around there just to make it look that it's it's sitting properly. Um, the two holes for these things here, you know, th those pieces there, they're a little bar with a, with a, with a, a little kind of cross member onto it. So when you fit it onto that, these little cross members fit into the holes. When I did all that, uh, should we say this here was wider than where the holes were. So I said, okay, you know, we'll, we'll try and get it in anyway, which knocked these things out of kilter. Um, it's just why they're kind of slightly down at an angle because they just everything just just wouldn't freaking fit in properly. I had to use another bit of filler down here because it was just all over the shop. Um, so I just I don't know. It just doesn't look grand. Um, fitting in the doors. Uh, if you look here, down the side there. Now that could have been you know the door warped. Again, I don't know, but it did. You I mean it didn't look warped, but it just didn't want to fit and fit in properly anyway. Um, the gun mantle, when you look at it like that, it looks, you know, it looks okay. But when you bring it up, f the full extent, you can see that it's higher at this side than it is at that side. Uh, if you try to straighten it out, I've done that, and you know, because these things are fitted into set markings so you can't be off with them you know this is all level so therefore that should be all right but when the gun went on and you look straight down the barrel you can see it it's <coughs> higher at one side than it is at the other um, nothing I can fake and do about it I've tried everything um, and again just for finish I just stuck it back on there so, um, I mean, I was going to go for the factory fresh look in this one and uh, you know, for the painting. So, the more I think in um, going into this kit, it would have to be kind of battle damage to take away from the, uh, the fact of how imperfect it is. Um, I believe that you know, I do want to do a factory fresh one. Um, but to do a factory fresh one, it would have to be, you know, uh, perfect fits all around, and you know, at least good fits all around. Most to me, kits will do that for you, but unfortunately, not this one. Not this one at all. Um, don't like it. Not happy. Not happy with it at all. Any of you have uh, ever built this this particular one? Okay, that's the uh, th this particular model, right? Not say any Panzer IV or Panzer III or whatever like that. This particular kit I had the same kind of problems as me. Just let me know in the uh, the comment section below. Um, again, you know, right, I'm after putting the turret on now, right? So you get the figure. And his hands are, you know, at that angle. You can't make them any closer to his body or whatever. When you pop him in, for one, he doesn't seem to kind of the hands. He, he he's he's kind of um, if that was realistic, he's he's resting on his wrists. <laughs> you know, uh, it, I think this figure is probably off something with a bigger cupola. Then it would actually fit grand. Are they after just moulding it and sticking it in? Because otherwise, like you know, his hands hang over the edge of it and things like that. No fucking horrible to be quite honest with you 
so you know if you want to use the figure for it, it just looks wrong um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to do a clo the, the hatch closed so I'm going to have to kind of pop off the hatch and that have the hatch open and all set open and that and all so I'm just going to have to kind of break it off and, and, and put it in the closed position because I can't use I can't use the figure but it's, you know you rest on something you don't rest sort of mid-air when your wrist's mid-air um, I mean when you look at the model like that or when you even look at the pictures of it you can see here that even this guy isn't as bad but he's still bad like uh, you can see there you know he's not actually resting on anything this hand is from the angle that they're showing you it looks like his hand is on it and that hand there it, he's on the uh, on, on this part of his wrist you know, I'm not a rivet counter, but you know, these these are little basic things to make it look right, and uh, it just it just to me it doesn't look right. Okay, not happy, not happy. Anyway, we we carry on. We get it. We're going to get it made. We're going to get it painted. And like I said, I'm going to kind of battle damage it a bit. Um, I'm going to do a bit of uh, rust and all that kind of stuff on it just to make it look freaking somewhat. Uh, Remember, I was also telling you about these little hooks where the Scherzen plates kind of hook onto. Um, I didn't like the, the fact that you were fitting these things on, barely just holding onto the edge, nothing for them to actually to sit into. Okay, and as you can see here, there's one missing here because it, it did pop off. Um, didn't notice it was didn't notice it was missing for uh, a little while, and uh, no, I can't freaking find it. But anyway, you mean if I wanted to continue on with that, it sure would be over anyway, so I'm not really too worried. But I'm going to have that bit damaged anyway. The first front shores and plate's going to be missing. There's going to be a little bit of rust there, just to show that the thing was broken off. Um, no, I'm totally unhappy, unhappy, unhappy. So anyway, right. Um, we carry on. We carry on anyway. So 15 heads, uh, 14 heads fixed in the turret on EP. Why go, why go to the whole purpose of showing you a full thickened stage, making a full drawing, just to fit the thickened turret on. Waste of space if you ask me. Anyway, right, we have the uh, accessory parts. Um, we've got our uh, spare wheels there, tracks, jerry can and the uh, bucket. Bucket, uh, used for painting. Something is like that. They used like to use the paints and not every unit had a a spray gun so they kind of just um, they, they, they basically uh, the hen splattered them on with a bucket okay um, this is for fitting the uh, the spare parts there's an extra spare wheel on the back with this one here um, we we'll have them in there as well but we we'll have another one here on the back gives you a choice of different uh, different ways of fitting things okay um, again here shows the spare wheel in the back it doesn't show it like this one so just giving you loads of different variations on how you can fit the um, the tracks and the jerry cans and all that in other words they're basically saying here's the accessories it's up to you how you fit them here's a couple of suggestions right and then it gives you the fitment here we go of the, uh, the shores and plates and the shores and plates holders so that's all that's left really to do for this kit um, is the, 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 the holders there for the Sheridan plates and the, uh, the holders and all that. Um, there is again off telling you about fitting the, uh, the track there for the aerial but you have your aerial back here. Sorry, there we go. <laughs> fitting the Sheridan holders, uh, fitting that aerial track. Um, I won't be fitting the aerial track because as far as I know it didn't feckin' go on. That one has the aerial here at the back. That's where the aerial kind of folds down to. That was in the earlier models. Um, but anyway, I digress. So I'm going to fit these little uh, holders at the side to fit on the, uh, the our, our spiky bits. Okay. Um, with the Scherzens, I'm going to be cutting them up along the uh, the lines that are there on them, you know, cutting them along these lines just to make them separate pieces so you can kind of twist them up and all that kind of uh, good stuff. Um, there you can see one there where the, uh, 
the shores and Kites actually did a good job. Okay, they did their job. Uh, the shores and Kites took the blast, saved the tank, I'd say, but from that one, um, I mean, they take the impact out of the round. So by the time the round actually hits the uh, the main tank, uh, most of the kinetic energy has gone out of it. So, okay, right, we'll fit. We'll, we'll, we'll Go ahead and fit these. Um, one thing I do remember again from the Academy one, um, for the, this piece on the turret, it didn't fit very good with the Academy one. It did not. Okay. Um, I ended up leaving it off because it was so bad. Um, we'll see how it goes here on the, uh, on the Tamiya one. Uh, hopefully it will fit nicely. All we can do is try. All we can do is try. And like I said, what doesn't fit, we can always break a piece off and battle damage. Good old battle damage. Um, I'm going to make it up. I'm going to test fit it dry. I'm not going to actually put glue it into place because I want to get the uh, get the thing painted, and it'll be practically impossible to paint in around there, especially with a, a camo scheme. Because the camo scheme did go in there and it went out there. Um, I double checked and all that. Uh, you can show it as you can see from here they don't have the camera screen on the inner one. Right? But from uh, actual pictures that I have seen of real tanks, I know they're all black and white. Now it could have been dirt, it could have been shadow, but I did find uh, a couple of pictures of these ones with the shores and, and with the doors open you could see you know these these here these doors open here you could see that the camera pattern was on the main body of the uh, of the tank itself so well, I just, like I said I'll just test fit it see if it all fits on uh, paint it up do the camera scheme and then try and fit that onto it if it goes on it goes on if it doesn't I'm not going to I'm not going to lose any sleep over it not at this stage um, the shores and plates like I said I probably leave off the front these are two, probably leave off the, the front one, um, have two and you know skip one and have the back one and you know something similar down on the other side where they've been you know blown and damaged and god knows freaking what else. Not going to go too too um too difficult on it shall we say. Um this is the camera screen I decided to go for. Okay. It's um, it says here that the ca the camouflage colour is red, brown, or the dark green. I'm going to go for the brown on it. Um, so it's going to be the brown kind of just little bludges, splodges. Okay, brown splodges. We go for that. Okay. Um, I'm going to get the shards and plates all sorted up and made up and everything else. We come back and have a look at it before I even start painting. And uh, I'll see you then. Okay. So near the end of uh, the build update part one, we'll just finish off the last of the build. And uh, I want comments on this one. I really, really do want comments on this one. Anybody that's made it in the past, have they had the same problems as me, or um, or is it down to um, basically the fact that? A lot of it is there is warpage in there and things like that, and the fact that uh, I must have fucked up somewhere along the line, <laughs> which wouldn't surprise me either. Okay, so anyway, let's. Uh, I'll carry on and get the shirts and stuff and get back to you. Okay, after uh, quite a miserable attempt at uh, putting on the shirts and holders and things like that. Nothing seemed to want to fit, nothing wanted to go in place. I got angry with it and uh, decided to do it without Scherzens. So I've broken off all the uh, all the attachments there and the ones that I had glued on, cleaned them all off again. Um, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to finish off. I'm going to put on the, um, the storage, some tracks, spare tracks. Uh, do a bit of damage here on two fenders and things and uh, we come back to them and have a look at it and then she'll be all ready then for painting so it's uh, going to be sure and less okay 
Uh, like I said, it's probably my fault because I got so freaking annoyed with the, how the fit is. Uh, not really happy with how it was going together. And um, just unhappy. <laughs> Poor me. So I continue on with that. Get the, uh, get the uh, storage onto it and then it'll be all ready for painting. And as you can see, I, I even did the tracks, the rubber band tracks. Not too bad. Seem better, but they're not too bad. Okay, I get them done, the, a few bits of storage, we'll come back then and have a look at it, and then we'll be all ready for painting. Okay, this is the final part now of build update number one. Uh, I'm after adding on a few little bits of uh, storage and things like that, I suppose you could call it. Uh, the extra armour here. Um, back then the spare tyre, spare wheel should I say, I couldn't call it a tyre, spare wheels, uh, two jerry cans, the bucket and the, um, the, the pen, wash pen, whatever they're going to use it for. I stuck three helmets there in the back as well. So that's that's really about it. Um, as you see now that they're, they're, they're a different colour, they're grey. I just use a bit of this uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 okay uh, just to give it a texture roughish texture on the on the tracks they were very they were very smooth and I want them to kind of um, I mean they were they were roughly cast you know they were precise in other words they, they fit and all that but the um, the actual metal it was um, should we say it, it rusted easy because it wasn't coated or anything like that but the um, it didn't corrode rust. This this the type of metal it was. If you ever see old tracks, besides say an old tank, the tank might be rusted away to hell. But the tracks did look kind of black. Well, the black is actually very, very, very dark brown as opposed to black. Um, they kind of they oxidize without actually corroding. It's a weird kind of thing. It's whatever the tracks are made of. It's a mixture of um, iron and steel rather than just say steel which would be in the um the, the the rest of it okay be it hardened steel or just ordinary steel so ordinary steel will rust but rust and corrode whereas the with the mixture of iron it kind of uh, gets the rusty look but um it just gets darker and darker and darker it takes an awful lot longer to corrode so that's why you often see uh, old old tracks and of and a say a rusted out tank whereas the tracks are still they still look good and they probably are you could if you free them all up they probably would work away but uh, they just they corrode at a different rate shall we say they corrode at a much much slower rate so anyway I put a bit of um, Mr. Surfacer on the tracks just to give them a bit of texture I also put a little bit here on the uh, the air cleaner um, I also used it here on the uh, exhaust, but where it is on the exhaust, I stippled it. Okay, as you can see there, with a bit of texture there. And that's just to get a bit of rust, rust marks on it. And I also did just the tiniest little bits there on the bottom of the, the jerry cans, because I want to show kind of um, I'm going to make that mud. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's literally down to what colour you paint it at when it's all finished but you can get the, the texture in there. Now I will be using a little bit more, I'll be using some in around here just to get that kind of a, a gritty mud, dried on mud texture to it but uh, I just, I'll just be doing it later on once I have the, once I have the tracks off and it's kind of stripped down for painting. So I said I'd show you how I'd finish off. Unfortunately we didn't go for the, um, the, the Shurzons on it my original plan of making it um, a sort of a factory fresh model that went out the window once um, once I once I started having a few issues with it shall we say a few issues um, as opposed when it comes to damage I didn't really do battle damage as such in other words I know um, bullet markings and things but I've got sort of driving damage and things like that where the fenders would get dinged and pranged and broken and god knows what else uh, the front one I dang damaged up the uh, the left hand one and the right hand one I removed it completely the front part of it uh, and the back then I 
dinged up the uh, rear left and didn't touch the rear right. Okay, so we just got one perfect. So it's no harm. You know, if they were all dinged, it's kind of makes it a bit obvious that it was done for purpose. Oh, I also made the um, the, the the tow rope. A uh, little bit of fiddly work there. I got the tow rope on. Um, Bit of glue and things like that it just needs to be cleaned off there at the edge. It's just still a little bit rough. Um, but I used the, uh, the supplied one rather than making my own. I said I'd give it a go. Uh, if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, then I'd have to redo it. But it worked. I was quite happy with it. So uh, that'll be painted up separately. Now for colour schemes, still not a hundred percent. I might go for say the um, the uh, dark yellow kind of a green stripe um, I'm thinking of going that way um, but I'm also, I'm also thinking of uh, using a bit of hairspray method painting the whole thing in the um, the, the uh, hull red which would be say the um, the primer colour for the um, you know rust primer which they'd have put on in the factory a um, little bit of uh, hairspray then and remove some of the uh, the finished colour on it just so it's been you know it's been kind of through the wars but it's been lucky that it's uh, kind of survived without getting hit um, all the extra armour then would have probably taken to you know putting the tracks on the outside it gives it it's in a plique armour it was the first form of a plique armour um, so there she is anyway okay all ready for painting so that's the end of build update number one. Don't forget to join me for build update number two where we'll get it all painted and finished off. So, thanks for joining me. Uh, don't forget to uh, give it a like or a dislike. That's up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, please give it a like. Please give it a like. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you have already. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you on the next one, Les. Stay safe. In the meantime, go and buy yourself a kit. Build it and enjoy it. It's John signing off. Catch you in the next one. Stay safe.